Hey YouTube, this is Jeremy Who Weeps. Um, I am going to redo my faulty video that I had previously uploaded on um, the applicability of the Torah today and Yoshua in the Tanakh, what's commonly called the Old Testament. Um, it's not going to, I don't think either one of them are going to be um, comprehensive, but I'm just going to try to give you what I, some of what I found. So, um, okay. Now, the applicability of the Torah, I'm going to read from my creed, because I think that says it really well. Okay? I believe that his Torah, Yiwei's Torah, the Creator's Torah, his teachings and instructions are crucial and beneficial, being applicable in personal or specific ways to, to a specific person, national, cultural, and universal ways and are all about our relationship with him and with each other and re reveal who he is, his character, which is love. The most important instructions being, the very first most important instruction, not the first one he gave, but the, the primary instruction, the first is in primary. Listen carefully and respond, O Yisrael. In Hebrew, it's Shema Yisrael. Yiweh Eloheinu Yiweh Echad. Yiwei, your ultimate powerful authority. Yiwei is one and only one. Numero uno, one. That's the Shema. Um, and all of you will love and be entirely devoted. Hold on. Okay, sorry, my microphone. And all of you will love and be entirely devoted to Yiwei, your ultimate powerful authority, with all of your mind, heart, and will and all that you think, with all of the entirety of who you are, and with all of your strength and all that you do, along with love your fellow human being as you love yourself. Now, I know a lot of people commonly say all your soul, but soul is nefesh, and nefesh really just means all the different parts of a creature, the entire creature. So all of you, your body, your mind, your personality, every last bit of you, that's your nefesh. That's your soul. Your soul is all of you. Every last bit, just like a nefesh is an animal. It's all of the animal. It's the animal's instincts, the animal's, uh, whatever goes on in its mind, um, the animal's body, every bit of the animal. That's that's the animal's nefesh. It's, it's all of the animal. Going on, um, along with the second primary one is love your fellow human being as you love yourself. Um, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Who's your neighbor? Anyone you come in contact with. That's your neighbor. A person that you come in contact with is your neighbor. Um, so love the people that you come in contact with as you love yourself. Um, now, most people want good for themselves. They have self-preservation. They want um, they want good for themselves. They want to you know be. They want to take care of themselves, make sure that they're okay, and and that people are being just to de to them, and that if pe if they make mistakes about something, that people will um, understand even if they have to correct them or something. So, yeah, lo um, respect and understanding, I think, is two good things about loving each other. These are further elaborated. So those two primary instructions are further elaborated in the Ten Orders. I am Yi, and this is Yiwei speaking, I am Yiwei, your ultimate powerful authority, who migrated you out of the land of oppressions. Now, in Hebrew, it's Mitzrayim. Uh, it means oppressions, and um, that's what they call Egypt. Because that's where they were slaves, out of the house of slavery. Other powerful authorities or an ultimate power or a great powerful authority will not exist for you above or in my presence. So Yue doesn't want to be equated with any other powerful authorities or anything that other people might think of as an ultimate powerful authority or, or God or deity. Um, they're, they're not comparable to him, so they're not to be um, equated to him in any way. Um, you will not make for yourself a sculpture or any resemblance of that which is in the skies above or which is in the land below or which is in the waters below the land. You will not bow down to them and you will not be made to serve them. Uh, I got to scroll down. Um, because I, Yiwei, your ultimate powerful authority, am an actively passionate powerful authority, persistently attentive and devoted, intolerant of rivalry, and requiring your exclusive devotion. 
responding to the crookednesses of fathers by dealing with children to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but doing perpetual loyal covenant love to the thousandth generation to those who love me and follow my instructions. Now, I know some people take it that um, when he says, not, don't make a sculpture or any resemblance of that which is in the skies above and land below or the waters below the land, some people take that very literally and they say you shouldn't have sculpture and you shouldn't make images, no any art that uh, portrays an image, you shouldn't have that. Um, and some people say, no, that's not what it means. It's primarily talking about bowing down to, to these things and being made to serve them. So it's basically something that people make, anything that a person makes, that you're not supposed to bow down to it and serve it. It's not supposed to be your ultimate powerful authority. Um, it's not supposed to replace Yi Wei, the, the unseen one, the one who has never been seen by a human being. Um, it's not supposed to replace him. So, and I, that's the way I take it. That's the way I understand it. Um, going on, you will not obliterate by making substitutions for misrepresenting or slandering the name, which would include the reputation and character of Yi Wei, your ultimate powerful authority, because truly Yi Wei will not leave the one unpunished who obliterates by making substitutions for misrepresenting or slandering his name, including his reputation and character. So he doesn't want to be called Lord. Um, he's not. His name is not supposed to be replaced with Lord or anything else. It, it's his name. It's his reputation and character. That's how he's known. He's known by his name. So obliterating his name, uh, making substitutions for his name, it's a big no-no. Going on. Remember the ceasing and resting day, the Shabbat. That's what Shabbat means, to cease and rest. To set it apart as special. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a time of ceasing and resting Shabbat, devoted to Yiwit, your ultimate powerful authority. On that day you will not do any work, um, especially the work done by Yeshua HaMashiach, but it would also include anything done to earn income by anyone, and life-saving activities would be exempt. So if there's people performing life-saving activities, that wouldn't be included in that, um, from my understanding. You or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant. Now, those male and female servants would be near the equivalent of employees. So basically, your employees. Or your animals or the stranger who is with you. Because in six days, Yiwei made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. So Yiwei knelt down and gifted the ceasing and resting day and separated it. Now, when Yiwei rested, it wasn't because he was tired. Basically, it just means he ceased. He stopped what he was doing. He, he took a day off from, from doing what he was doing because he was done. Um, so he, it wasn't, he wasn't resting because he was tired. He was just resting because he'd reached the end of the activity that he wanted to accomplish. And I think that he was resting to um, set his children, humanity, an example. Going on, give weight and respect, appreciation, honor, and importance to your father and your mother, which would ultimately be Yi Wei, because Yi Wei is ultimately father and mother to us, since he's beyond gender and he has both masculine and feminine traits. So that your days are prolonged upon the land, which Yi Wei, your ultimate powerful authority, is giving you. You will not murder or unjustly take the life of a human being. That's literally shatter or break in pieces a human being. You will not have sex or be intimately unified with another man's wife or another woman's husband or be unfaithful to yours. You will not take that which belongs to another, especially by deception or in secrecy, without their knowledge and consent. You will not be in obliterating by making substitutions for misrepresenting or slandering witness against your fellow human being. You will not desire with the intent to possess your fellow person's house you will not desire with the intent to possess your fellow man's wife or woman's husband or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your fellow human being. So anything that belongs to someone else, you're not to desire with the intent to possess it. While trying to follow his instructions doesn't rescue any of us, the applicable guidelines are still needed and in effect, the covenant having been renewed or made new and reveal our need for redemption. Also, at some future point in time, the statements made by Almighty Yi Wei will be the result, the reality of behavior for his children, since whatever Yi Wei says will happen is more sure than any fact. The regulations include not consuming blood or eating animals that are not considered food. So there's animals that Yi Wei says are not food. 
Um, and we're not supposed to eat those animals because they're not food. Um, so when Yeshua says, it, when it says in Scripture that, I, which I think might be an, an ad, a spurious add-in, when it says, by this he declared all foods clean, it wouldn't apply to this because these things aren't even food. So even if he did declare all foods clean, it, in a way it almost doesn't matter because these things were never considered food. Or they're not considered food. So pork and pig products, shellfish, catfish, octopus, rodent, rabbit, snake, horse, maggot, dung beetle, etc. There's there's some more. If you can look in scripture, I think it's some, um, oh, which one is it? Waikra or Leviticus chapter 18? I'm not positive. But um, you can look in there and it'll list off the, the different animals that are not considered food. Not having sex with someone or anything outside the guidelines given in scripture. So not with a near relative, someone of the same gender, another person's spouse, an animal, a woman when she's having her period, both a woman and her daughter, a prostitute or for money, or rape, or as well as children or dead people. So, and when I say near relative, I think I think it includes in there like um, sons, daughters, uh, mother, father, aunt, uncle, cousin, um, grandpa, grandma, I, I, grandchild. I, I think those are all the ones that are included. So basically your family. Um, keeping oneself from all non yi way instructed religious practices. So any kind of religious or spiritual practices that yi way has not instructed that you would stay away from that. So, um, you know, anything like um, religious holidays that are not yi way instructed, like say Christmas or Easter or Valentine's Day or um, oh, what are the other ones? Um, May Day. Um, Halloween, that's a religious festival. So all those days, that's actually a very pagan religious festival. And um, so, and, and other pagan things like horoscopes or um, uh, Ouija boards, um, uh, worshiping saints, praying to saints, any of these kind of things that Yi Wei finds detestable. He, he says, don't do it, I hate it. Um, being honest and fair in business and interrelational practices. Um, and then I'm not sure if this is optional or not wearing seat seat. Um, little tassels that you wear at that are blue and white um, and possibly other colored tassels that you wear uh, by your waist to remind you that to follow Yi Wei's instructions and to identify as one of Yi Wei's people. So if you see someone wearing these tassels, you should be able to look at them and go, oh, you you follow Yi Wei's instructions. I can trust you. You're operating in love. You're someone that I, I can trust. I mean, that's the way it should be. So, But I'm not sure if, if those are applicable today or not. There's, there's a few instructions that he gives that I'm just not sure of their applicability or not. Um, so that'd be something that I would advise researching and looking into. Um, so yeah, those are those are primarily his instructions. Now I know he has like temple. There's a lot of temple instructions and the kind of offerings and sacrifices you bring to the temple. But the temple is not on earth today. It doesn't exist and hasn't existed for many, many years. So you can't follow those instructions. So they wouldn't apply. Um, then there's like say um, um, governmental instructions where it talks about stoning someone to death. These, these were the kind of instructions that the government would the government of, of that day and age, the East, and the time of Israel, that they would enforce. But that's not, you, I mean, if you see somebody, you, you know if someone that's committed adultery, you're not supposed to um, go and try and stone them or anything like that. It, it doesn't apply because it's not the same situation. So so those I don't think are applicable today. The, the governmental ones, the temple um, instructions, um, there's cultural instructions that, like, I met, talked about this at another video, but building a fence around your roof. Well, they would go and um, hang out on the roof. That was like um, just a place to hang out, almost like a living room or something. Well, he said build a fence around the roof so that people wouldn't fall off. It was a safety precaution, kind of like don't run around the swimming pool, you know, to avoid accidents. But most people don't go and hang out on the roof. Now, if they would, then it would be a sensible thing to do to have like some kind of railing to make sure that nobody's going to fall off the edge. Um, but there are some cultural instructions like that that um, that I don't think would apply today unless you have a special circumstance like you hang out on the roof. Um, 
Then there's some instructions that I'm not positive about. I know there's instruction of don't tattoo yourselves for the dead. Don't cut the corner of your beard, which is basically this this part right here. Don't don't cut this part right here. Um, but I think that some of these were, oh, and don't wear um, clothing worn of two kinds of material, but I think that the, the two kinds of material is talking about is um, material that's produced from animals, material that's produced from plants. So like, say, wool and cotton, you wouldn't wear those two together because, um, and actually from what I've heard, that science has found that that's not a good thing to do anyways, um, that you don't wear clothing woven of both both animal and plant products, that it's either one or the other. Um, but then there's there's an instruction of like, don't clip the edges of your beard. Um, now, I'm not sure if that's, from my understanding, I, th I think that's more of like a, um, the and like don't tattoo yourselves for dead dad, don't clip the corners. I think these were um, to basically say, don't imitate the pagans, be because these were, practices that the pagans would do in their worship. Um, they would round the corners of their hair, make their hair like a bowl to honor the sun because they worship the sun. So Yiwei says, don't do those things because I don't want you identifying. I don't want you to be identified as one of the pagans who worship their deities. That's my understanding of those. With the beard thing, I know that some people say, no, you shouldn't clip your corners of your beard. You should just let your beard grow. I'm not convinced. Um... So I, I think it's it's possible that it's just, I think it's very possible that it's just concerning um, don't imitate the pagans and don't do their worship practices. Um, so that's that's my, and, and, and then of course there's uh, personal instructions where Yi Wei says, tells, tells Noah, build this huge seagoing vessel because I'm sending a flood. Well, it doesn't mean all of us have to build a huge seagoing vessel. No, it applied to that particular person. So there's some instructions that he gives to one particular person that don't apply to everybody else. Um, but that, those are the, the, the instructions that I see and the applica applicability of his instructions. I'm going to include a link to a video that a guy has made on YouTube that I found really worthwhile, even though I, I did find uh, things that were errors in it. But um, to me, it would be a really worthy study guide if you want to look at and see um, what other instructions there are that UA says to do. They primarily have to do with um, being decent to people and common sense and being caring and kind to other people. And um, I mean, that's what they seem to me. And, and, and there are some common sense and just some instructions on what to do in situations where um, it's potential conflict between people and how to resolve that, um, how to make sure that that you're operating um, honestly and fairly in, in business and interrelational practices. Um, but that's that's what I see as, as far as the examples. Now I know in, in the what's called the New Testament, the Brit Hadashah, that it talks about how the one who is operating love is fulfilling the Torah. And I think that's right. I mean, if, if you're operating in love, you're fulfilling the Torah. If you're operating in love, you're not going to murder somebody. If you're operating in love, you're not going to commit adultery. Um, I mean, if, if you want to uh, get with somebody else and you're, you're with one person, you want to get with somebody else first, you um, end the relationship of the person that you're with. You divorce them, whatever. And of course, you have to do that in a just and fair and right way. You would want to do that the same way that you would want it done to you. Um, so if you're going to divorce the person, and of, of course, um, divorce in Torah is um, allowed, and even Yiwei himself is a divorcee, I believe. Um, I'm going to do a video. I'm planning on doing a video on that in the near future, but um, that's that's my understanding of Yah's instructions. Now, um, Yoshua in the Tanakh. Actually, I found him. He's in the very first word in Bereshit, Genesis. Uh, you know how it says, in the beginning? It's one word. It means in a primacy beginning. In a primacy beginning, and the word is Bereshit. And what Bereshit actually means, I'll put a notation with the um, what the let each individual letter means because they're pictographic letters. Um, it's basically a picture. The letter is itself is a picture, and it means something. Um, but if you put all of the letters together, this is the message just in the word Bereshit. 
from his own house, the foremost, or headman, of the ultimate power will be destroyed, killed by his hand on a cross for the covenant. So, the first word in Be'er Rashid is proclaiming Mashiach, proclaiming Messiah, um, which I think is very significant. So, Yeshua is proclaimed in the very first word of the very first verse of Scripture. Um, in Shemot, what's commonly called Exodus, um, the, the list of names in the first chapter, uh, if you put the names together, because each name means something, if you put the names together, this is the message that they say. Ale strives or persists or perseveres. He grasps the heel or supplanter. See and understand, a son, he who listens and obeys, he is my joining to intimately know Yiwei. There is recompense, an honored home, an honored dwelling place. The son of the right hand will judge my torturous wrestling and bring fortune and happiness. Just from the names. Very powerful stuff, I think. So, um, I'm, and there's also, I found a website with um, 365 uh, prophecies that are supposed to be fulfilled by Yeshua, although it's actually, um, hold on, let me think, three, 323, I found, because I found that 37 of them are error, they're, they're wrong, they, they're misapplied, they don't make sense, um, but I will put a, I'm putting a link in the description to the webpage that I found with that, and a notation that lists all the numbers that it gives on that page because each prophecy is numbered and I'll, I'll list with the numbers that I found to be wrong. Um, and then on number 122 in that page it says something about corn of wheat. The corn of wheat? What? I don't even know what the hell that means. Corn of wheat. You've got corn or wheat but not corn of wheat. It doesn't make any sense. That's just goofy. So um I think that's everything, Yeshua in the Tanakh. Yeah, he's all over the place in the Tanakh. But, of course, the Christians try and, and um, say that he's pre-exists in the Tanakh, which is goofy and silly. And they try and say that he's Yue himself, which is goofy and silly, because he's Yeshua is not the Father. Yeshua actually, the name Yeshua actually means Yue is salvation. That's what his name means. So just like a lot of names um, in Scripture actually mean things like... Um, Yiwei is my judge. That's one of one of the names means. I can't remember which one. It might be Daniel, but I'm not positive. Oh, El is El is my judge. I think yeah, I think that's what Daniel means. El is my judge. So these names mean something, but just because Yiwei is in the name, Yehuda means to intimately know Yiwei. But people aren't going to claim that Yehuda is a deity just because that's what his name means. So so just like with Joshua. His name means Yiwei is salvation, but that doesn't mean that he's deity. It doesn't mean he's a god or something. Anyways, um, trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. <sighs> Too warm, I'm feeling yuck, but hopefully this has been helpful, beneficial, interesting. Feel free to leave comments, feedback, whatever. Um, like I said, this is not meant to be comprehensive, just... Um, some indicators of what I have found for the Torah to be applicable today and how I see Yoshua being in, in the Tanakh Old Testament. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a very good day, night, evening, morning, whenever you watch this. Very good life. Shalom, au revoir, au revoir, bon voyage, arrivederci, shalom, bye.